Hi guys! Good day! It's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today class, it's all about inverse variation. And we are told to solve for the indicated variable in each of the following equations. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So we do have four examples class for you to really understand this one. So this will be one and two. Next example, so we have three and last one, we have four. So we will explain that step by step for you to really understand class how to solve this one. So, do not forget class, in inverse variation, if our x value increases, our y value decreases. That's actually opposite direction class. Different in direct variation. Do you still remember class, in direct variation? So, in direct variation, if our x value increases, our y value also increases. So, if our x value decreases, our y value also decreases. So, that's in direct variation class. In inverse variation, the opposite direction class, if your x increases, your y decreases. Now, if your x decreases, your y will be increasing. So, opposite direction. So, just remember that one class. So, therefore, okay, so therefore, based on this given example class for number 1, so, you already have the idea class for your answer. So, example number 1 class. If y varies inversely as x and y equals 3 when x equals 4, Find y when x equals 6. Now, you check class. You check your x value. x from 4, it becomes 6, right? So, from 4, it becomes 6. So, therefore, your x value increases. From 4, it becomes 6. So, therefore, our y value will be decreasing. Our y value will be decreasing, right? Why is that, sir? Our x value increases from 4, it becomes 6. So, therefore, you already have an idea class that your y should be less than 3. Why is that, sir? Our x increases, therefore, our y will be opposite direction. It will be decreasing. So, therefore, our y answer, it should be less than 3. I hope you understand this one, class. So, you already have the idea, class, that your y is less than 3 for you not to commit mistake. But, if you're if you're confused with this one, do, do not worry, class. We will explain this one step by step. So, the first thing that you need to do, you need to find k. And once you get k, just simply substitute k from the last equation. Alright, so let me explain this one. So, I just want to explain that one class. For you not to be confused with regards to your answer, you already have the idea class for your answer. So, first thing, you write the equation y varies inversely as x. So, you can write this one as y equals k over x. If you have this word inversely, there's something to do with division. So, y equals k over x. And first equation, y equals 3 when x equals 4. So, copy y. Okay, substitute the value of 3 from y. So, our y is 3. So, 3 equals copy k over x is 4. So, once again, class, first thing to do, you find the value of k. And once you get k, okay, you just simply substitute the value of k from the last equation. So, to get the value of k, you can do cross multiplication. So, understood that there's 1 here. Cross multiply. Alright. So, this will be 3 times 4. So, 3 times 4 equals 1 times k. So, 1 times k. Okay. Small k class. So, 3 times 4, that is 12, equals 1 times k, that is k. So, therefore, our k is equals to 12. Once again, class, this is just the same. 12 equals k is just the same with k equals 12. And once you get k, simply substitute this k from this equation class, from the last equation. So, find y. So, once again, write the equation y equals k over x. You are, you are told to find y. So, you are told to find y. So, simply copy y since you are told to find y. Your k is 12. So, substitute 12 from this k. So, 12 over your x is 6. 12 over 6. So, y equals... 12 divided by 6 plus. Can we divide? Yep, we can divide. So, 12 divided by 6, that is 2. And our y class is 2. So, check class. Is our y value decreasing? Yep. Our y value decreasing from 3, it becomes 2. So, that's it class. That's the answer for number 1. Easy, right? For number 1. So, that's the thing there class. To solve for the inverse variation, you need to get... The value of k, and once you get the value of k, simply substitute k from the last equation. Alright, let's try number 2. So, you pause the video class, I will be erasing this one. 
So number two. If R varies inversely as S, once again, you write the equation plus R varies inversely as S. So that would be R equals K over S. R equals K over S. So if R varies inversely as S and R equals 100 when S equals 27, find the value of R when S equals 45. So what, what do you check? Let's check this. R R and S, so S, is S increasing or decreasing? That's correct. S is increasing, right? From 27, it becomes 45. So it's increasing for S. 27, it becomes 45. So therefore, you already have the idea that your R value will be decreasing. Why is that, sir? Now, once again, we have R and S. Our S from 27, it becomes 45. So 27, it becomes 45. So our S is increasing. Therefore, our R value, it should be decreasing. That would be opposite direction plus. That's the thing there plus about inverse variation. So you already have the idea that your answer, it should be less than 100. So let's solve. Let's check. If we get the right answer, that our answer should be less than 100. So from this equation, first statement, R equals 100. Simply substitute 100 from this R. This will be 100 equals K. Once again, we need to get K for us to write K on the last equation. So, just always remember that one class. You always need to get the value of K. And S is 27. So, to get the value of K, just simply cross multiply. So, understood that there's one here. So, cross multiplication. Alright. So, this will be... So, 20, 100 times 27. Once again, class, in this part, class, we do have two solutions. But most of the students, class, they are so confused with these properties of equality. But that, that, let me explain, class, the, the other solution to find K. So first, you can do the first solution, cross-multiplication. So that would be 100 times 27. Alright, equals K times 1. Or K times 1, that is K. Or let me just write 1 times K or K times 1. K times 1. So 100 times 27. Now, if you're multiplying hundreds... Okay, 100, just simply add two zeros class. This will be 20 to 2,700. Okay, once again, if you're multiplying 10, 100, 1,000, just count the number of zeros. So, 1, 2, add two zeros. Equals K times 1, that is K. So, that's how you multiply class if the numbers are zeros. But if you want to make it sure, go ahead class. You can multiply 100 by 27. So, 7 times 0, 0, 7 times 0, 0, 7 times 1 is 7, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, add, so, 2, 7, 0, 0, 2,700. So, you can have the solution plus, okay, you can have the solution cross multiplication, but if you want other solution to make it simple, you can do the properties of equality. But once again, class, there are so many students are so confused with this one. Properties of equality. So to solve this one, to find K, you can multiply both sides by 27. Why is that, sir? So that we can eliminate this 27. Okay, you can multiply both sides by 27 because 27 divided by 27 is 1. So you can cancel this out. So that the remaining equation will be K. Once again, once you multiply 27 on the right of this equal sign, you also do that on the left side to make the equation balance. So you can cancel this out because 27 divided by 27 is 100. And you will have 27 times 100 equals, so the remaining equation will be K. And you will get the same answer thus. So check, you will get the same answer. So it depends on your class, which do you prefer? You can use this properties of equality, multiplication, property of equality, or you can just simply do the cross multiplication. But once again, class, most of the students, they use this cross multiplication class because they are so confused with these properties of equality. Alright, so once we get K, simply use this equation to find the value of, we are told to find the value of R. So copy R equals K over S. And we're told to find the value of R, so copy R equals, our K is 2,700, and our S is 45. Alright, and then we divide, so 2,700 divided by 45. So let me check. 
Okay, let's divide it here. 100 divided by 45. I think that is 45 divided by... 27 divided by 45 cannot be. So, we will be using 270. Now, 270 divided by 45. So, can, can I erase this one class? K. You pause the video for K. Once again, K is 2,700. So, we just simply substitute K from this one. 2,700. So, let me erase this one class for K. 2,700. 700. So, let's divide 2,700. So, I think 45, 245, that's 90. 445, that's 180. I think uh, 6, right? Let's, let's check. 45 times 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 0 carry 3. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 3, that is 27. 6, that's 6. So, 270 divided by 45, that's 6. 6 times 45, that's 270. Bring down 0. Then, 0 divided by 45, that's 0. 0 times 45, that is 0. That is 60 class. Alright, so 2,700 divided by 45, the answer is 60. So, therefore, our R is 60. That's it class. That's the answer for our R. Check class. Is our R value decreases? Yep. So our S value increasing, therefore opposite direction for R, our R value will be decreasing. So therefore our R is correct. R is equals to 60. That's it plus 4 number 2. Easy right? For number 2, you find K. And once you get K, simply substitute K from this given equation. So therefore our R is equals to 60. That's the answer for number 2. All right, let's try number three. So let me erase this one, or we can have this other solution here. So for number three. So I hope you understand this one, class. You pause the video for number two. So let's try number three. If P varies inversely as the square of Q, and P equals three when Q equals four, find P when Q equals 16. So let's write the equation P varies inversely so k over the square of q what do you mean by the square of q plus is square of q so therefore that would be q squared so once again if you have square of q it means q squared so p varies inversely as the square of q and our p is 3 once again class you get the value of k to get the last equation to get this value of p so once again, our P is 3, so simply substitute 3 from P, so this will be 3 equals, so copy K, since we need to get K, and our Q is 4, so that would be 4, then squared. Alright, once again, get the value of K from the first equation plus this one, for you to find the last equation, which is P. Alright, so this will be 3 equals K over 4 squared class. What do you mean by 4 squared? That's correct. 4 squared, it means 4 times 4. Once again, class, do not be confused. 4 squared, it doesn't mean 4 times 2. It means 4 times 4. You multiply 4 by itself twice. That is 16. Alright, so this will be k over 16. So to get the value of k, simply cross multiply class. Let's just do the cross multiplication. Okay, let's just do the cross multiplication first. Alright, so this will be 3 times 16 equals k times 1. Or let me just write k plus. k times 1 is just k. Now, 3 times 16, that is 48, right? Let me check this. I think that's 48. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. 48. 48 equals k. Now, once you get k, Simply write the equation again to find the value of P. So, P equals K over the equation as Q squared. So, P, you find P. So, P equals K is 48. So, 48 divided by Q is 16. So, 16 then squared. Alright. So, can we divide? Nope. You cannot divide. Simply simplify this one first. So, simplify class. 16 squared. What do you mean by 16 squared? 
16 squared, it means you multiply 16 by itself twice. So 16 times 16, I think that's 256. Let me check this. 16 times 16. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 carry 3. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3. That is 9. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. 6. 9 plus 16. I know, sorry, 9 plus 6, that's 5. 15, sorry, 15, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 256. So, this will be, once again, class, do not divide 48 by 16. It should be this parenthesis exponent. Always follow PEMDAS, class. So, simplify this one first. So, this will be P equals 48 divided by 16 times 16. That is 256. Alright, so P equals can we divide 48 yep i think by 16 right because 16 times 16 that is 256 right and 48 3 times 16 that is 48 so we can divide this one by 16 sir is it necessary to reduce the fraction to its lowest term yep that's actually mandatory class that you always reduce the fraction to its lowest term that's actually mandatory class. So we can divide this one by 16. Because 16 times 3, that is 48, right? And 16 times 16, that is 256. So therefore, we can divide this one by 16. Divide by 16, once again class, you always reduce the fraction to its lowest term. That's actually mandatory. So 48 divided by 16, that is 3. 256 divided by 16, that is 16. Once again, class, do not divide 48 by 256. You will get a decimal answer and it will be complicated, class, if you're dealing with decimals. So the thing that we will do is we just need to reduce the fraction, class, to its lowest term. Always reduce the fraction to its lowest term. Do not divide 48 by 256. You will get decimal. But instead, you need to reduce. Instead, you need to reduce, class. 48 divided by 16, that is 3. 256 divided by 16, that is 16. And that's our answer class for number 3. P equals 3 over 16. That's it. So check, can we reduce 3 and 16? Nope, we cannot reduce. That's the final answer for number 3. Alright, so you try this one class, number 4. We do have 4 examples class, but I think we don't have enough time for this one. Our time is already 18 minutes. So you try to answer number 4 class, this one. So if you pause the video for number 3. You try to answer number 4 class and you put your answer in the comment section now, down below. Now, if you want to know the answer for number 4, please feel free class, feel free to leave a comment in our YouTube channel, in our Facebook channel for me to write the answer for number 4. So if you want to know the answer for number 4, go ahead class. Uh, leave a comment or message me in the Facebook channel for me to write the answer for number 4. But you try class. You try number 4 and you put your answer in the comment section down below. Let me check class if you really understand our topic in solving in problem solving in inverse variation with regards to inverse variation. So I hope you learned something new today. Now if you like this video, if you learned something new today, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe class. You share it to your friends and to your classmates so that we can help more students, especially for those students who are struggling in solving math problems. Once again, this is Teacher MJ. Have a great day class. Goodbye for now. Please try number four. And you put your answer in the comment section down below. Bye-bye for now class. Bye-bye.